I'm updating Rolling Stock for optimal performance on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Regardless of how much rolling stock advances, there are always some pieces of rolling stock that are going to need some upgrades, a little bit of work to make them roll optimally on our layout. And that's what I want to talk about today. Often the mechanics of a car needs just a little bit of tweaking. A few things need to be changed like upgrading to metal wheel sets in some cases or changing out couplers to, to make all of our couplers match and work together. And so we're going to look at how to do some of those things that will help our rolling stock work absolutely optimally as it runs on our layout. Wait, stop, hold on, hold it right there, Batman. This project is way too ambitious. There's no way that we can talk about all that we need to know about trucks, couplers, wheels, install metal wheel sets, reweight cars, and build and install body mounted couplers all in one video. It's going to be way too long and nobody's going to want to watch that. So how about this? Let's deal with the building and mounting those body mounted couplers in next week's video. We'll cover everything else today and then it'll be much more manageable and you'll enjoy watching it a lot more. Okay, let's move forward. All right, let's go, Batman, come on. Ready, action. I said action. It's hard to get good help these days. Are there some other upgrades that you like to do to your rolling stock? Tell us about it in the comments section down below. Now let's go over to the workbench and we'll get started. We're gonna start with the Atlas car. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is upgrading to metal wheel sets. Now I know uh, this at one time and with some people still is kind of a uh, controversial topic, whether you need to, to upgrade to we, uh, metal wheel sets as opposed to the plastic ones that come on many models. Uh, but I'm going to share with you my opinion based on my experience. I really believe in upgrading to metal wheel sets for three reasons. Number one, I believe that metal wheel sets roll more freely. And number two, and this is argued by many, but this is my experience, uh, plastic wheel sets tend to attract and hold much more dirt and grime than metal wheel sets. A, a strip of grime uh, along where these run on the rails, where they, they pick up uh, all kinds of things off the rails. Metal wheel sets don't do that. And when plastic wheel sets pick up that grind, they also redistribute it across your layout. Also, I like to upgrade wheel sets because plastic wheel sets, even the, the modern ones, tend to have fairly oversized flanges. And I don't like the way they look. And also, they will not run as well on finer track, like Code 55 or Code 40 track. Uh, the metal wheel sets that I use are semi-scale, which means they have a, a much smaller flange and will run better on that, that finer track. Uh, another reason I like the metal wheel sets is I just like the sound that you get of the clickety-clack of the metal wheel sets over the joints in your track. Uh, that's just an aesthetic thing, but that, that makes a difference to me. In this case, this is an Atlas car, and Atlas trucks are pin-mounted, which means it just has a friction pin that fits into the hole in the bolster. So the, the easiest way to remove those is just to get a, a, a small, flat screwdriver, and I'm going to slide it under the truck, up uh, between the truck and the bolster, and just pry up very gently. And you see it pries the truck right off. Um, there is my bolster pin. I'm going to hold on to that. Now I can remove the, the wheel sets from these trucks uh, most easily by removing the rear uh, wheel set first, the one farthest away from the, 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 the coupler. And I'm just going to hold the, the, the truck up here by the front wheel set. And I can just pull and kind of twist and pry that wheel set right out. And once I've got that one out, I can kind of squeeze on the truck on this uh, backside and uh, that front uh, wheel set will pop out uh, as well. Now, when you're upgrading to metal wheel sets, you have to know the axle length, and that is an important thing to, to find out, and you really need to have a way to measure it because uh, some manufacturers use uh, one wheel set length kind of across the board, but some of them, and Atlas is the number one culprit, Atlas uses three or four different wheel set lengths in different cars. 
So you need to have a way of measuring that. And the best way of doing that is to have a, a, a good caliper. Uh, this is an electronic caliper I picked up at Micromark. Uh, these are not uh, particularly expensive, but they're very handy to have around. Uh, I'm going to set my caliper to zero. Also make sure that it is set on inches. It's completely closed, set on inches, and set to zero because these uh, wheel sets are measured in, uh, in fractions of an inch. Uh, and so then I'm going to open it up and just measure the length of my wheel set all the way to the ends of the axles. And in this case, um, I'm going to move it around to make sure that I get a measure of it, of it straight. And you see, I uh, there am measuring that wheel set to be uh, 0.56 inches. And so I'm going to look for a wheel set that is the closest to that that I can find. Uh, I personally use Fox Valley wheel sets. I have had really, really good luck with them. And Fox Valley has a wheel set that is actually 0.563 and uh, I think that's going to be the size that I'm, I'm going to need. Now, if I was weathering, which I, I will eventually do, I would want to weather these wheel sets, uh, the wheels themselves, before I installed these. In my case, we're just talking about upgrading, so I'm going to come back and do that at a later time. But I'm just going to pop these uh, wheel sets back in exactly the same way as uh, I took the old ones out of this truck. And, um, and then once I get them in, I'm just going to give them a spin and make sure that they roll freely. And, um, and they seem to be rolling very nicely. So I think those are, are going to work, those are gonna work just right. And so with my wheel sets uh, back in my truck, uh, I'm ready to reinstall my truck. And uh, I find it's easiest to do that by taking the bolster pin and dropping it into the hole on the truck first. I should have done that with a set of tweezers. It's a whole lot easier. And then once I have it in the hole, I can hold my finger on top of that pin, line it up with the hole in the bolster, and uh, just push it in gently. And then I usually take my screwdriver and push it on down. I like for my trucks to be tur free turning, uh, but not to have a lot of play or a lot of wiggle back and forth. Uh, so you end up with a lot of rocking motion in your cars. Uh, if you don't get your wheel, uh, if your bolster pins in tight enough, if you get them in too tight, then you're going to find that they bind when they turn and it'll cause derailment problems. And there we go. And that car is, uh, is ready to roll. Now, before I go any further, I should talk to you a little bit about trucks and wheel size. Um, because these are some things you want to know if you want your rolling stock to look right, to look prototypical. Uh, you need to have some understanding of both the era of the truck as well as the size of the truck that you're dealing with on your car. Um, this is a modern, a very modern car, and so you'll notice the truck that I'm dealing with has these round end caps, and if you look very closely, they have kind of a triangular pattern on them. Uh, those are roller-bearing trucks, and that's what any modern uh, type of rolling stock is going to have, a roller-bearing truck. Uh, some of your older rolling stock, if you're going back 50, 60 years or more, uh, you're going to see that instead of this round end cap, the end of the axle is going to have a square box that, uh, that actually slopes down from top to bottom, uh, and that uh, has a door on it that opens up. That's called the journal box. And back uh, in the day, they would you know, pack grease into those journal boxes, and that's what would grease the, the uh, friction bearings on the wheel sets. Uh, today that we use packed bearings, and so you have these roller bearing trucks. So the the type of truck you have, roller bearing or or with journal boxes, is going to say a lot about the era of that truck. And uh, if you're swapping out trucks, or if you've bought some used rolling stock, if you got the wrong era of truck on there, it's not going to look right. Uh, the second thing you need to make note of is the size of truck. And I know some real railroaders are going to groan when I say this because it's a way oversimplification. But for the sake of model railroading, uh, for the most part, this is your rule of thumb. Look at the number of springs on the side of the truck. Notice that this truck has three springs on it. For model railroading purposes, basically three springs denotes a 100-ton uh, ton truck. Uh, if it has two, only two springs on it, then you're looking at a 70-ton truck. Now, that's important to know. 
because you want to have about the right size truck for your car, but also if you're changing the wheel sets, wheel sets come in three different sizes. They come in 36 inch, 33 inch, and 28 inch wheels. Uh, a 100 ton bear, a 100 ton truck needs 36 inch wheel sets. That's what I just put on these in my metal wheel sets. Uh, a 70 ton truck will usually have 33 inch wheel sets, and uh, you can buy those uh, as you buy your uh, uh, your metal wheel sets. You can buy you know 36 and 33. They're both very plentiful. 28 inch wheel sets are made for uh, e extremely um, high clearance types of rolling stock, specifically um, auto racks uh, sometimes will have 28 inch uh, wheel sets and it lowers the clearance on an otherwise tall car for the sake of getting under underpasses and through tunnels and, and that sort of thing. For the most part, you're going to be using 100 ton and some 70 ton trucks if you're modeling in the modern era and you're going to be using 36 and 33 inch wheel sets. Now, if you are modeling very early, uh, then you may need to go back and check those stats. What I'm quoting you is most the, the, the most true for, for modern uh, era rolling stock. Now, I also want to say here, in, in this case, I just replaced the wheel sets on the truck. This is an Atlas truck. It has an Atlas Accumate coupler. Uh, micro trains for in scale is the standard for couplers, just like Katie is the standard for HO scale uh, and, and some others. Uh, actually, Micro Trains was originally part of Katie, and uh, Katie uh, split them off. So Micro Trains originally was Katie's, uh, still sets the standard for, for N-Scale. Accumate couplers from, uh, from Atlas work very well with Micro Trains uh, couplers. Now, some people prefer to, to change these out, and that's fine. I, I usually keep these, but there are some types of, uh, of couplers that, that I don't like and that I don't want. Obviously, if you get some older rolling stock, you can get some Rapido uh, old horn hook couplers. Those you probably want to get rid of. They look terrible and they are not at all compatible with your modern couplers uh, like Microtrains or, or Accumate or McHenry's or, or others. You want an actual knuckle coupler that looks realistic. So if you get a coupler, you don't like the coupler, uh, sometimes you're going to want to just change the truck. You, I showed you how I took the truck off of this. And you can just buy completely replacement trucks with the couplers mounted on them from Microtrains and replace uh, truck and coupler wheels and all in one fell swoop. Uh, I, I try not to do that when I can because you can actually save a lot of money just by replacing the wheel sets and, and keeping the truck. While we're on the subject of couplers, it's a good idea to check a few things with regard to your couplers to make sure that they are uh, within the specs that you need them to be. Uh, I have this uh, Microtrains coupler test gauge, which is a fantastic tool for this. You can also do this with an NMRA gauge. Uh, but I find that working with couplers, this just is a little faster and a little easier. Uh, this literally, I, I just have my car sitting on a scrap of track, and this sits right down over the track, and it's got little nubs so it fits between the wheel. And you first just can tell for sure that your coupler matches up just right in height. And you see the height here is just perfect. It just couples with the coupler on the gauge uh, exactly right. You can also turn it over, and this little ramp here, uh, as you set the, the gauge on top of the rails, this ramp is made to measure the, the, uh, the height of your trip pin. Uh, as you back your car up, your trip pin should just easily slide up over that ramp. Uh, now, in this case, you see this trip pin here, it's catching on the end of the ramp. So it needs to be either pushed in a little bit or bent up a little bit so that it will uh, uh, meet my standards, won't catch on things like uh, frogs of, on my points. The, the, the trip pin on this end, you'll see, now it rides right up over that just gently and perfectly. That's exactly the way uh, that one should be. Now this trip pin that I need to bend a little bit, the easiest way I have to do that is I actually have a pair of jeweler's pliers. Uh, you see it has a, a, a round jaw on the top, or a, a round um, kind of a nub, and then a curved kind of a cup jaw on the bottom. And this is made for bending things into curves. And I can come in here and grab that pin. And there you can see with just that little bend, now it slides right up over that ramp just the way that it should. 
Uh, one other thing that you can do with this gauge is you can test the gauge of the wheels. Uh, it has these two little notches here. Now again, the NMRA gauges work for this also perfectly well, but the Microtrain's gauge has uh, the notches for it as well. And you can just test the gauge of the flanges to make sure they're going to fit just exactly the way they should on the rails. And these wheels uh, all seem to be just perfectly engaged. One final way that you can upgrade and optimize your rolling stock is by giving them their proper weight that they need. Now I'm planning a whole video just on weighting cars, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about this. Uh, but if you need some more information, Eric Hall over at IMRRO.com on YouTube just did a video on uh, weighting cars and uh, about told you about all the information that you need to know there about the NMRA recommended practice and how to go about that. So I recommend that if you need that information right away. Uh, I'm going to make a video on that subject too. And if I've made that, uh, I'm going to include a card right here so you can see all of those details. Uh, but literally what I have here is just a postal scale. You can pick these up at office supply stores or I, I think even at Walmart or, or on Amazon. And uh, you need a scale that uh, will measure either in grams, if you want to do it in grams, or for me, I measure in ounces, but I need to be able to measure to at least the tenth of an ounce. And as I turn my scale on here and uh, get it up and going, and then I hit the choices, and you can see right there, it is measuring in ounces, and you see the decimal, it measures in tenths of an ounce. Uh, NMRA uh, standards. Uh, dictate how much a car should weigh. And again, you can kind of see that uh, I have it typed right in a piece of paper on the top of my scale. Uh, I'll talk more about that in another video. Uh, but it's a good idea to weigh each car just to see if it is uh, within the, uh, uh, the, the parameters that it should be. Cars will roll better and your trains will run better if they are the proper weight. If they're too light, they will string line easily around curves. Uh, if they're much too heavy, uh, then they can add the added drag on your trains. Uh, this car, I happen to know, should weigh uh, about 1.1 ounces. And I get my scale going here again. And if I put this car on here, you see it, it's 1.2. That is well within uh, uh, specifications uh, that, that I can work with. Um, this, this center beam uh, flat car, I happen to know, should weigh closer to 1.3 ounces. And if I put it on the scale, you'll notice that it only weighs 0 0.9. It really needs some more weight. But I also have a load for it that I run in it. And if I lay the load on there to add that much weight, uh, now you see it brings it up to 1.1. We're pretty close to, to the recommended tolerance for that. So if you have cars that are light, uh, some cars are easier to add weight to than others. Um, Covered hoppers, sometimes the lids will lift off. You can put weight on the inside. Box cars, a lot of times the bottom frames will come out and you can add weight. Um, things like uh, open hoppers uh, or gondolas. Uh, again, loads are a good way to add weight to those. Um, but it's really helpful and really helps to optimize how your trains run if you get them to the right weight. These few simple checks and upgrades can make even today's most premium rolling stock run at its very best on our layouts, which makes the trains roll better, which makes for a much more enjoyable operating session, or just an opportunity to run some trains around our layout. And if you ever buy any second-hand rolling stock or some older rolling stock, then these kinds of checks and upgrades are absolutely essential to help those cars to run at their optimum whenever we put them on the layout. So I hope that you'll take some time to check some of these items and make some of these upgrades to your rolling stock. I think you'll really be glad you did when you see how well they perform after you've done them. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. Also, be sure and check out the description down below this video where you're going to find a link to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week. Also, check out my Patreon page and links to my social media where you can connect with me. So I hope you'll check out the description down below. Well, be sure and join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great Model Railroad segment, and I look forward to seeing you then.
ten, Lizzie. 